This time on IFAF. Idaho Falls and families and oh. family time. Captain John Deathblow is Deathblow. <laughs> Can you imagine? He's <laughs> just, you're running away from Garfield. Like C-3PO, may I shut down? Sure. <laughs> We'll reveal to you who gave you your gift this year if you don't give us a billion dollars. <laughs> IFAF, Idaho Falls Infotainment Talk Show with Mike Nelson and Carly Morgan. Welcome, new listeners, new subscribers, new followers on Apple Podcasts and Spotify and listening through Google Chrome, which is oddly one of our biggest platforms. Weird. Okay. Every little bit helps. We've gotten a few in the last few weeks. Yeah. And I just... So much gratitude. We thanked you last episode, so don't expect much this episode. I'm kidding. <laughs> Which I will say, I'm kind of surprised because, you know, we don't have a ton of followers yet, but I did have kind of a fun little experience today. Okay. So I was at my day job. Uh, that soon won't be my day job anymore. I'm actually switching. You but... act- You went back to your retail job on Black Friday, you brave, brave soul. Yeah. Well, I didn't want to leave him in the lurch. No. So I fair. went back to help out. Very and nice. while I was checking someone out, this guy said, hey, do you have a podcast? This guy was checking you out. Well, I he... guess so. <laughs> <laughs> no, not enough. I mean, <laughs> yeah, but maybe, I get it. but yeah. I get it. But yeah, so he was like, do you have a podcast? And I was like- why, yes, I do. Have you seen it? <laughs> he's like, yeah. Uh, what's that one? It's like IFAF. Why, yes, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's so cool. And he was saying that he was telling his friends about it. And I thought that was very cool. Yeah. When we first started doing this show, that was one of the metrics that we dreamed up, right? Was right. like, once we start getting recognized in public, <laughs> it's we know we've made it when. I don't think we've made it yet. But it is kind of neat no. that we're hitting that metric. We had to miss out on a lot. I wouldn't say I've been missing it, Bob. <laughs> but no, we had to. We missed out on Jenny Oaks Baker this week, uh-huh. this, the past week. Uh, we missed out on, there was a Thanksgiving run. Who are these psychopaths that get I up mean, to do a 10K at 9 a.m. on Thanksgiving morning? Don't you have a family? <laughs> to be fair, if I did that, I would be so... So hungry by the time dinner rolled around at 1 p.m. Maybe that's why they do it. <laughs> Work up that appetite. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, honestly, that's kind of brilliant. I, I give I give you you people, what do you mean you people, a hard time. Mm-hmm. But honestly, I deep down, I wish I was like that. I wish I had your energy <sighs> and your lust for life and I'm not. moving your body. I just can't. Runner, now, you know what? Runners are just a different kind of crackhead. There's a reason yes. they call it a runner's high. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You got to find your drug somewhere. Yeah, if, you're, if your brain didn't flood with endorphins, <laughs> people wouldn't do it. We missed. it sucks. Did I mention Jenny Oaks <laughs> Baker and we missed um, Forgotten Carols, Ryan uh-huh. Shoop and the Rubber Band. Which, great name, by the way. Great name. Yeah, he's big in Salt Lake. They have one hit single or... Hit single, I should put that in finger quotes. I don't think they ever joined a major record label. Maybe they did. Uh, called Dream Big, which I thought was a pretty good song. Oh, cute. Yeah. I like that title. And of course, yeah, a great name. By the way, we can't go any further without recognizing that between the two of us, we just look like a wonderful Christmas candy cane, don't we? I know, we look so cute. <laughs> I'm wearing red and green, you're wearing white. And a little bit of red. <laughs> a little bit of red, the traditional Christmas colors. And, you know, all this red up here. <laughs> it's so Christmas. Yes, you got your hair did. I it did. It looks great, by the way. Thank you. It, it's going to calm down a little. <laughs> so here's a secret. I get a perm. I use. I have pin straight hair, like pin straight naturally. It's always and- been fascinating to me how straight haired girls want perms and curly haired <laughs> girls use a, a straightening iron. Just, right. Yeah. Right. Everyone I know is like that. And the biggest reason why I wanted to get a perm was because pin straight hair looks really, really, really flat on your head if it's natural. Like it, it's like I'm always wet. And you did get a little cut too. I did. I decided to go quite a bit shorter because it was, um, you know, maybe three or four inches longer. But I felt like the body was kind of getting lost in all that sauce. Sure. You know, and I saw this old picture of me. By old, I mean like a year ago <laughs> where my hair was shorter and it looked just bodacious. I'm old enough to remember a <laughs> year ago. Right. But yeah, I liked how bodacious my hair looked. So yeah. I wanted it to go back to that. Are you bringing back bodacious? I am. Also radical too. I was gonna say I'm I'm using rad. I've been I haven't stopped using rad Same. ever. Same. I think I say rad all the time. <laughs> We've talked. I say about, rad and hot. Yeah. Yeah. Everything's on a 25 year cycle. 
fashion, mm-hmm. music. Slang. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that, yeah, Rad was supposed to die in the mid to late 80s, and then it came back around 2000, and mm-hmm. now it's back again. Yeah. Guess who's back? <laughs> back again. <laughs> Rad is back. Oh, and I Tell saw this friends. coming, too. It, so I, I was kind of like, ew, that's sad. When Mom Jeans came back. Mm. But guess what's back again? Flares. Low-rise jeans. Oh, I hate low-rise jeans. From the early 2000s. Okay, here's the thing. Unless you have a perfect body, low-rise jeans don't look good on you. Right, no, I, I get it. And I, I told you the story, I think, because you used to work at Treasures, Formal and Bridal, I, bridal mm-hmm. that we mentioned in our bonus episode. Yeah, Uh, Our local Christmas gift guide, by the way. Maybe check that out if you haven't. Check that out. Quick plug for this because Carly brought up 13 local businesses that she personally loves, has personally shopped, and it's a great local gift giving guide Mm -hmm. if you're looking for ideas for Christmas. Yeah. I came in. So I thought I was like a 32-inch waist. Uh Come to find out it was more like a 40-inch waist. Because I was wearing my pants too low. Mm-hmm. Because I always hiked them up to like my rib cage <laughs> as a kid. But then when the low rise trend came along and it even happened for dudes a little bit, I was it like, did. yeah, okay, they can hang on my hips. That's cool. And I I had to fight it. I had to get used to it. And then I haven't stopped. <laughs> Which I hate. I hate being so able to see. So I thought my see... waist size was wrong. <laughs> That's fair. Here's the thing, though. I hate being able to see like underwear I, and also as a girl with hip dips. The whale dips. tail in the back. Yeah. Plus, I have hip dips. So no matter what I do, if I wear low, low-rise low jeans, it looks like I've got a muffin top, whether or not I do, you know? Yeah. And on top of that, too, like, I'm an hourglass figure. So, like, why would I cut off at the widest part of my hip when I could instead cut off at the narrowest part of my waist where I actually look curvy? I remember thinking in the year 2000... When I saw these low-rise jeans happening, I remember thinking, okay, this is cool and all, but um, what's it going to be in 25 years? Mm-hmm. Because th- some of them low-rise jeans, even the ones like Britney Spears wore, you could almost see the top of the the JJ. Yeah. The hoo-ha. You could, you could almost see the entire pubic bone. A- and because I knew then that fashion right. was cyclical, I was like, I when this comes back... That is that going to be the end of the world? Will that be the apocalypse? <laughs> just wait. It's going to go from <laughs> just above your crotch to just under your boobs. <laughs> you know? <laughs> and I know I'm starting to sound like an old person. You were talking last week about clutching your pearls. <laughs> you know? Some of the right. things kids say these days make you blush. Uh-huh. And boy, I have no idea <laughs> what it's going to be like. Okay, how about let's predict the one that's coming in 2050. The way that folks really ought to do it and that I wish they would start doing it is people need to just analyze themselves as an individual, their own personal style, their own preferences, how they want clothes to look on on them. And then they need to make an, you know, an uh, educated choice based on that as to what looks good on them instead of going with the trends because trends don't last. Fashion does. That's never going to happen, but I get you. Well, (laughs) I know... Even though I don't wear jeans, I will have exactly two, maybe three pairs. I'll have one pair of fat jeans. <laughs> I'll have one pair of skinny jeans and one pair of flares, and that's all I need. <laughs> and then I'm good. Yeah. I mean, all throughout my childhood, a flare was where it was at. Yeah. You know? And I remember one year in second grade, they only had straight leg jeans at Kmart. And I was so upset. <laughs> that entire school year, I had to wear straight leg jeans, and I looked so dumb Compared to all the other kids, and I felt so dumb, and I just, uh, I felt so masculine, and I was like, this is dumb. Like, can I get new jeans yet, Mom? Not to try and one-up you, but I actually wore Sears tough skin jeans <laughs> growing up as a kid. Mm-hmm. With the reinforced knee. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they that was humiliating. My parents did all the shopping <laughs> in the Sears catalog. I made up my mind very quickly, sent my parents on their way, and then went out and checked out Cheryl Teague's in the bra section. Yeah. That's it. <laughs>
<laughs> I think that's the second or third time you've re- you've referenced that. I think, uh, that must have been a pretty pivotal pivotal point in your childhood. Cheryl Teague's in the Sears catalog and Barbara Carrera in Condor Man, <laughs> one of the greatest movies ever made. <laughs> Disney is remaking everything. Why don't you remake Condor Man? There we go. Now that we have the special effects to actually support it. It had the original Phantom of the Opera, Michael Crawford. That's true. Theme song huh? by Henry freaking Mancini. Bring back Condor Man. <laughs> okay. I think another we know we've made it when point is where there's so many comments on so many things now that we just can't respond to them all individually on the show. Right. So I'll make a blanket comment about the fact that I got absolutely eviscerated <laughs> for talking about climate control and how fairly inexpensive it was. And I want to point out they misunderstood you. I, well, I think so. Yeah. Because what I was real, I wasn't talking about your entire heating and air conditioning bill for, mm-hmm. for the month of the year. I was talking about the difference between keeping your house 66 degrees in the winter mm-hmm. and seventy a nice, comfy, cozy, toasty 72 degrees. Right. We had people from Europe telling me in euros how much their heating bill was. And they, let's face it, they probably live in like a 100-year-old castle. Right, something. You know, and just telling me something how- Something with no insulation. Ridiculous I was. Right. So, like, I mean, I almost sound like a politician who doesn't know the price of a gallon of milk or something. <laughs> well, and also, really what's going on is that someone didn't turn on their active listening. R- well, right. Like, I, I thought I explained it pretty well. But yes, I, I know that there's a difference monetarily. But in between those- Five or six degrees between people in your household revolting and being, you know, not not having to wear your moon boots and sweaters inside. (laughs) That difference. Just that difference for three to six months. Yeah. I drive a 15-year-old car, okay? Like, I'm not not Mr. Big You're not Mr. Moneybags. Yeah. 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 My idea of a good time is going to... Salt Lake and staying at a nice place and doing a little Christmas shopping like we're going to do, right. is it next week? Right. Or two yeah. weeks from now? But next yeah, week. Yeah. You know, just and having a little brunch. Mm-hmm. I, I, I'm not that fancy. Yeah. And that's a once a year thing. It's not like a yeah. quarterly thing. All right. So know? I just, yeah, I just yeah. wanted to, <laughs> I'm sorry for all the people I have horribly offended <laughs> talking about. You're a monster. Yeah. <laughs> I'm part of the one percent. I'm part of the problem. <laughs> well, I mean, let's see here. You're cis, hetero, yeah. white, straight, Old. male. Yeah, <laughs> yeah just, all the strikes against me. <laughs> F- that guy. What does he know? <laughs> all right, you stick. Keep sticking it to the man, kids. <laughs> Well, and also, the thing is, in that same clip, I'm agreeing with you, and no one says anything about me. <laughs> so, I mean, maybe. That's because you're cute. Maybe it's just your face. <laughs> <laughs> it's just his face. Yeah. I maybe, have maybe RBF. Have resting rich face. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and you've heard, right, that resting bitch face really isn't the correct nomenclature necessarily. It should be bitchy resting face. Oh. It should be BRF. Okay, I get There's that. There's a lot of BRF proponents. Right, right. Yeah. I'm like, so I have BRF or RRF. You have RRF. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'd rather have a richy bitchy face than a, than a bitchy resting face. Yeah. I'd rather have a free bottle in front of me than a prefrontal lobotomy. Now, see, I can say that, but I can't say what was it that I had a Josh hard time Hutcherson. with. Josh Hutcherson. I can't say, oh, yeah, let's talk about Josh Hutcherson. Yeah. Okay, this is the perfect segue because (laughs) I went viral this week. Yeah. Now, let me, okay, so there's there's the YouTube headline. Now, let me tone it down and give you the honest truth. A post that I saw somewhere else. That you curated. It's 14 seconds long. And I do believe if you can't create, then at least curate. Yeah. And that's what I do on my Mike Helps Idaho Instagram. Mm-hmm. Handle is Mike Helps Idaho, one word. If you look five or six posts down, you'll see some blue dominoes. It's 14 seconds long. I had it on my phone since September 20th. I decided to post it. You could have been famous so much sooner. I could have. I waited two months to post it. <laughs> Although I do think timing was part of it. Because on Mike Helps Idaho, I like to post just basically relatable lifestyle stuff. Yeah. Too many realtors or real estate agents will post stuff like, 
Happy Thanksgiving, a little design they did in Canva, and you see 200 of those in a, in a day. Right, right. I like to post stuff like, what does what does home ownership mean to me? Right. Oh, well, cute animals. Fun stuff you can only do in a home. Like, you know, dance in the kitchen. You know, you, you can't do that if you live in an apartment. Not if you have someone underneath you. On the, yeah, <laughs> maybe on the bottom floor. Yeah. But um, so I posted this little video. In fact, look here. Let's take a look at it right now. All together. This is up to 2.5. Thank you, Beatles. 2.5 million views. Can you believe that? Here we go. And, you know, by the time this airs, it'll probably be at 3 million. It, it's probably going to hit 3 million tonight. Right. Jeez. 120,000 likes. Can that be right? That's right. That's nuts. Unbelievable. So so here's the video. You've never had anything be that viral. No. No, no. No. Record, record over three years. Mm -hmm. How long have I been re doing real estate? Four years. Uh-huh. Was 60,000. Okay, you just watched that. Mm -hmm. That's at 2.8 2 million is what it's at right now. And technically, now that you showed it on, on the podcast, any views from this, you could in your head add to that. I suppose <laughs> add another thousand to it or whatever we get. I think about we get about a thousand video views per episode. Currently. All together. Yeah. But you could help with that. But <laughs> Follow us. Like us. Maybe. Uh, smash that subscribe button. <laughs> maybe invite your friends to watch us. Sure. If you love them. If you don't, then don't. But, you know, that's up to you. So it's the weirdest thing. I posted it on a Sunday. Monday, I saw it hit 10,000. I was like, oh, hey, neato. Yeah. Yay, yay me. Tuesday, right. 20,000. Uh, same thing. Wednesday, 40,000. Same thing. I was like, okay, it'll be done. By Wednesday night, it was 150,000 or something Crazy. like that. And then I guess everybody was just bored <laughs> over the Thanksgiving weekend. Uh-huh. Because <laughs> it's at 2.8 million and still going, Carl. Right. I know. That's crazy. So the thing that occurred to me is I was we roasted some garlic for Thanksgiving, which mm -hmm. I just I just love. You can take cheap 48 cent cloves of garlic and turn it into this delicious, healthy, buttery-esque mellow garlic. If you like garlic bread, you'll love roasted garlic because it takes all the bitterness and sharpness out of it. Mm -hmm. And you're just left with this smooth... Mm -hmm. There's a reason garlic is called oja in Spanish. Right. It's like the simplest seminal of the seasonings. Yeah. And it's just so good. So I'm roasting garlic <laughs> and I'm checking my phone and every... Like I started counting... In the tens of the thousands view. Oh, we're at- uh, Wild. The, one million ten, you know, one million. Like there's 500 comments. Like what you do when you're trying to space out your numbers when you're counting for right and sync. Oh. One million one, one million two, one million three. Yes. <laughs> yeah. That's exactly what it is. And I, and I thought for a brief moment, this is what any and every celebrity goes through when they post anything. Mm-hmm. Like they, they watch it and go, oh, well, it didn't do as well as my 10 million views post. But <laughs> right. like the Kardashians, like even, I don't know, somebody at random, John Mayer, mm -hmm. you know? There you go. That's a good one. <laughs> like, yeah. I'm sure this, this stupid video of these dominoes, not even my video. Again, one that I took from the internet. I think I said that. But, and you've made no money off of, so no one has to feel bad about it. Oh, yeah. It. It, it actually did get a little thing popped up and said, do you want to monetize this? And I'm like, mm, no, it's not mine. Yeah. I don't deserve it. But there's a lot of accounts out there that don't deserve it. Right. I mean, I would say most. Yeah. It's totally a thing. Most account. So here we are, you know, struggling and scraping and scrapping and... <laughs> And actually creating. for every single like. And actually creating, you know? Yeah. We and just wait. There's going to be someone. We've actually earned some karma through this video, I think. Because uh -huh. now there's going to be someone who's going to take one of ours, and they're going to get a few million views. Right. They'll remix it or whatever by yeah. going going like this uh -huh. the whole time and pointing, pointing at the camera. Yes. What this guy said. Those reaction videos, they're out of control. I skip them now. Yeah. Because they make me so mad. I'm like, no, no, no. You didn't do anything for this. You're not even adding commentary. It'd be different if they were saying, yeah, that guy's totally right and here's why. But no, nothing. So speaking of reaction videos, we still haven't gotten to, we mentioned Josh Hutcherson. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you may know him as PETA from The Hunger Games. Mm -hmm. He's experiencing a resurgence in popularity because of his role in Five Nights at Freddy's. Uh -huh. I thought he was great in that. Yeah. Um, but there was a meme made in 2014 of Josh Hutcherson 
uh, to Flo Rida's whistle song. Uh huh. And now it just it last week Thanksgiving week it just exploded on TikTok where it's it's kind of the new Rick Roll. Right. Only people are placing Josh Hutcherson photos and videos in the most unlikely of places, like coming out of a dot matrix printer or on a cup right. of coffee or in a Subway sandwich or, you know. Right, right. <laughs> um, and so I started to get these comments on Instagram with gifts of Josh Hutcherson. And I'm going, uh-huh. what's this all about? <laughs> so I had to go down that rabbit hole. That's funny. Anyway, it just it I've had stuff go by. I've hit a million views before, like on YouTube with my kick ass classical mm. stuff. Right. Um, and but my record on Instagram was sixty thousand views, period. Right. And I remember being, eh, you know, pretty I, I don't pretty live my l- life by that because sure. what does it really mean? Is that, you know, the, the old expression that that and a dollar will get you a cup of coffee. Um, but yeah, that and a dollar will get me jack shit at pick me up or pop shop fizz biz hip sip thirst burst big swig <laughs> right yeah. uh, maybe the dollar tree <laughs> yeah. yes yeah yeah you could probably make that 25, and a dollar 25 cents. will yeah. get me a box of good and plenties <laughs> at the go. dollar store <laughs> <sighs> just the worst candy <laughs> but but it was kind of a fun ride to ride right for a minute yeah i get that but i tell you what in a week or two we'll follow up and we'll see if it how it did it's not stopping at 2.8 million so I assume that means it's going to hit three, maybe even four. Yeah, maybe even five. Maybe, maybe even six. Maybe. <laughs> Slow there, down there, camper. <laughs> really quick. Can I throw something out there? Yes. Josh Hutcherson and Matt Reif kind of look exactly the same, but just a little different. Yeah. You know, it's almost like you stretch one and you squash the other. <laughs> you know? <laughs> kind of, yeah. Yeah, defined yeah. jawline. Yeah. Pretty eyes, pretty face. Yeah, very yeah. pretty face. Yeah. Do, you want to, do you want to have a, a little cuddle bit of a sesh? five head? <laughs> yeah, yeah, not in a bad way. I love a five head. Uh, yeah, you know, great. Yeah. Woo, I'm safe. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but yeah, a little bit of a five head. Nice big bold eyebrows. Yeah, you know, very square jaw. Was there a fake Matt Rife controversy this past week? Some sort of scandal oh, I no or idea. something? I Probably. honestly. I heard it out of the corner of my ear. And you know, I kind of wasn't... vaguely remember hearing that too. I don't know what it's about. Do what? I care? Not really. Do you think you've noticed that cancel culture is getting sort of deflated? Mm. Like I Yes and no. I, I guess it kind of depends. A lot of companies that canceled their people are now bringing them back. They've always done that. Right. Like that's they... the thing. Everyone who's all like, oh, he's getting canceled. And that's so sad for him. Blah, blah, blah. Dude, like, wait six months. He's going to be fine. Oh no, this right. huge celebrity with a lot of money is suddenly not making money for six months, even though he has enough to last him six lifetimes. So sad for him. Yeah, people getting canceled. Okay, Johnny Depp, the most famous one. Right. Amber Heard saying, he abused me. And then him going, hmm, taking six months to download all the security video. Right. And, you know, come to find out Amber was the abuser. I Here's the thing. I don't think... I don't think he was pure as driven oh, no. snow in that. No, no. <laughs> and it was a shit show, and, and it reflected realistically, poorly on both of them. Who was the worst abuser? I would say Amber, based I, on the evidence that I've seen. I think so too. And I watched a lot of that trial. And also, realistically, like, dude, as much as we like to think that being uh, like being in a court of law is completely impartial. It's all theatrics. It's all convincing people to your side. There were some and doing theatrics. It effect- and doing it effectively. And it's I mean, too bad Amber Heard never learned to cry while acting because well, that was that. so unconvincing. Right. So Thanksgiving was fun. Oh, it was the best. And it's so nice having two Thanksgivings. Yeah. So I don't have a lot of family. I just mm-hmm. don't. And the family that I do have is either far away or dead or dead to me. <laughs> um, but you had complete. So usually I would do a Friendsgiving. Right. Way back in the day when I was a wild man, I'd do a <laughs> Dranksgiving. <laughs> but you had two family Thanksgivings that we went to. I and got they're both pretty big, too. So much tryptophan and protein. Right. Yeah. <laughs> right. I loved it. Yeah. Because, okay, my dad comes from one of nine siblings. And then my mom comes from one of seven. Yeah. Can you tell that we're <laughs> both sides of my family are Mormon? <laughs> wow. Yeah. Just and so a lot. we walk into the Shelley Senior Center for our family's Thanksgiving. And maybe I shouldn't give that secret away because 
I don't want it to get snatched up next year. But, you know, we've got like 30, 40 people in there. Like realistically, a small town. I, I said a, 50. <laughs> your dad said 60. Okay. So, I mean... Too dang many. Somewhere in oh, there. Oh, you know what? Wait. I know just the grandkids and great-grandkids were 30. Wow. So between them and the adults, we're at, we're at at least 50. I had never been to uh, Thanksgiving that large. <laughs> and it was... that's just one side of the family. That's right. all aunts, uncles, cousins. That's it's it. your dad's side. Yeah. Then we went to your mom's side. Yeah. Yeah. Much smaller, but still about you know, 20 people. Much smaller, but better pie. <laughs> the pie was really good there. Yeah. Although those pumpkin roll things at the first one were oh, pretty those good. Are, those are good. Yeah. yeah. And it's kind of, one thing I like about having such a big family is that there's so many like different personalities. Like you're always going to get along with someone, A, and there's so much opportunity for talent. Like, I don't know if you remember, we talked to my aunt Pam. Oh, right. Yes. Who is the number two Fabric designer in the world. Or or her pattern is the number two. Number two bestseller. Pat- yeah. I mean, like, not to take anything away. I, I didn't mean to no, no, draw no, a distinction good. there, but I wanted to be specific. Yeah. But yeah, she has a, um, oh, here, we'll bring it up. So her name is Pammy Jane, and she developed this pattern, and it's available in a variety of colors. It's called Kitty Litter. Kitty Litter. Isn't that the cutest? By Pammy Jane. and And she also does quilt patterns, too. Just wow. And they're so cute. <laughs> you wouldn't expect <laughs> to meet somebody like that at a senior center in Shelly on Thanksgiving. <laughs> right. But right. there we were. Well, and she was telling me all about how she had uh, like this European designer come in and buy like four bolts of each color of her fabric. Yeah. I mean, isn't that incredible? Yeah. Yeah. And honestly, I want one of her quilts so bad, but I can't afford it. It's, but I want it. <laughs> I believe it, if you got one, it would be in the thousands of dollars. Realistically, for that much time and effort, that's what it should be. Yeah. But, you know, someday when I'm rich, <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Someday when I'm rich, I'll pay 4000 just was, for fun. I was listening to, <laughs> I listened to Christmas music for probably eight hours today. Uh-huh. And um, someday you at dork. Christmas is one of my faves. <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah. While you were working retail. Yeah. Involuntarily listening to Christmas music <laughs> on know, a Black as Friday. As a matter of fact, they didn't play Christmas music, which I what? was so relieved about. I, know. I would email corporate immediately and say, we have a major issue. To be fair, I think that one of... So all of the stores <laughs> have access to the store's Pandora. Okay. And I kind of think that someone went in and deleted it because they didn't want to listen to it. And honestly... That's a baller move. Funny. <laughs> what if it was me? Yeah. <laughs> Just kidding. It's not. <laughs> it's my last day. I'm not trying to create bad blood right before I walk out the door. <laughs> but you got to do what you got to do. Right. You play Christmas music on Black Friday. I mean, fair. You can. And also, like, you're already making your employees deal with this hellish situation. And then you're going to do that to them, too. Employees. The same 10 songs cycled over and over and over. Feelings don't matter. <laughs> Are you not a capitalist? My feelings don't matter to you. You got to, it's not about the employee. You, so there's a lot of, we talked about bad marketing. We, in our first ever Thanksgiving roast last episode. Uh-huh. And the thing I will say this episode is sort of a follow-up is a lot of companies do this sort of inside out messaging mm-hmm. where they say, we are having a sale. And what they ought to be doing is messaging from the outside in, mm. you can save forty percent, right? Because the minute it's it's the old Dale Carnegie tried and true, always speak in terms of the prospects interest mm-hmm. technique, right? Where you talk about talk in terms of what they want, mm-hmm. and what do they want? They want Christmas music on Black Friday. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. That's true. <laughs> and can we talk a quick moment about my feelings as an employee on Black Friday? <laughs> sure. So an incident happened today. Okay. It was very small, but it boiled my blood a little bit. <laughs> so there's a guy who was looking at these glow-in-the-dark mushrooms that we had. They're like the stick on your wall, like the stars okay. type, you know? So they're little flat plastic mushrooms that glow in the dark. And I was like, hey, just so you know, we also have those in pot leaf pattern, which <laughs> is a little out there. Just sure. telling him what merch is available. Exactly. And apparently, it's like an Amazon recommendation. That's exactly what I said. If you're interested in this, you might also like 
<laughs> exactly. Yeah. I and you can't peg people. I'm not going to assume just because he looks like a little Mormon boy, he is a little Mormon boy. Yeah. You know, I'm going to give him the benefit of a doubt. <laughs> anyway, so I say, hey, just so you know, we have that same product in a pot leaf pattern. Do with that information what you will. Sure. Basically. Mm -hmm. And I walked away. And my coworker heard when his girlfriend came over and said, hey, what did she say? And he told her. And she's like, oh, that's so inappropriate. And she, <laughs> okay. of course, told me about it. Yeah, and I was right. like, mm, inappropriate? Really? Is it, an, is it inappropriate? Or am I just being an algorithm? Do You're they, welcome. Right. Do they get offended at Amazon's purchase recommendations? Right. Too? Ooh, at one point, I went up to her and I was like, hey, anything I can help you find? Da, da, da. Just talking, even though I hated her at that point and I thought she was just <laughs> the scum of the earth, right? And uh, she was like, no, no, we're good. Thank you so much for checking. And, and I was like, yeah, just trying to be helpful. And then I walked away and that was me sticking it to the man. <laughs> you were doing your job. Right, right. And honestly, her little, uh, that's so inappropriate. Like, I'm sorry that you don't know how this works, honey. Go home then. Yeah. If you're going to be offended that quick by that little thing, go home. You can't be out on Black Friday. Would you like to look into the benefits of cannabis for certain medical conditions? <laughs> Would you like to know more about hemp? Right. You know Would what? You that's the thing. They aren't even necessarily pot leaves. They're yeah. hemp leaves. Yeah. Maybe you're really into skincare. All right. I just, I, I feel. Maybe they just look like leaves. <laughs> bad that for people that are constantly offended. I do. I feel, yeah. I feel that that is my reaction to them is pity. Yeah. And that's fair. Sympathy. Yeah. That it, life must be tough for you, lady. Mm hmm. <laughs> Dude, and she was like my age or younger too. I was like, I'm sorry, dude. If like half the country is legal, you can't be offended by that. Right? Yeah. <laughs> sorry. Mean, you, a lot of people tend to look toward the extremes because the extremes are the ones that are getting the most attention. Right. Meanwhile, us in the center are just kind of smiling and nodding. You know, that's like if... um. Her boyfriend was looking at our heatable, huggable rainbow, and I said, oh, well, you know, we also have pronoun pins that tell people your pronouns if you're interested in that. Oh, that's so inappropriate. Right? I'm going to walk into your store and just point out things that are inappropriate. Like, that's the thing. I mean, yeah. hemp leaves, yeah. If they were fentanyl pills, sure, she might have a no, point. You know what? If they were babies eating fentanyl pills. <laughs> or like fentanyl pills eating babies. There we go. <laughs> then you can be offended. <laughs> All right. There you go. <laughs> Baby's doing mushrooms. But technically a thing that is neutral at best. Yeah. You know, chill, yeah. dude. Right. It's a leaf. You're fine. So let's segue from turkey to chicken. Jill's chicken. Just a quick note. So sad. Jill's chicken shack is closed. I had no, I guess they were closed and were going to reopen. And then they posted a heartfelt 15 minute video explaining why they weren't going to reopen. Yeah, and I get it. I what do. is what are people in Iona going to do for dinner now? That's well, literally the only restaurant in Iona. Now, to be fair, before Jill's got there, it used to be Ernie's, and it sat closed for at least a decade. Yeah. So you know they will live, but you grew up in Iona. What did you do for dinner? Went to did you ever go to town? Yeah, we went to town. Okay. Usually, Dad would pick something up on his way home, or actually, most of the time, my mom would cook. Oh man! I what? know. I came from a sweet, lame. I came from such a sweet little nuclear family. Look at me. That's why I'm so well adjusted. Jill's Chicken Shack. <laughs> you will be missed. I never really introduced myself mm -hmm. to Jill, but I knew who she were and right. she was. And her husband worked in the back frying the chicken. Yeah. And uh, I think their daughter like worked the register, and it was a family business. But they just they had to make the change to. Make sure they weren't missing out on their kids' childhoods and all that. Right, but, which I get. And also, did they consider making it just not a family business and just a business? Right. Like, yeah, just yeah. employing a bunch Hire of teenagers? I'm sure we could solve all your problems if you just come and talk to us first. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> sure. Kidding. I'm just going to I'm gonna miss them so much that I would rather, you know, present any solution to keep my Jill's chicken. But uh, <laughs> Grandpa's Southern Barbecue... Did fried chicken on Fridays for a while, then they brought oh. it back, and I don't know if they still are. So, <gasps> you but know, you... I've heard the McRib is back too. Oh, oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Been meaning to try that. <laughs> back to Iona just for a second. Do yeah. you know we've had a couple? Last week we had two sightings. One in Idaho Falls by the Civic Center, Frontier Center, whatever. It was someone saw a deer, and they actually posted on one of the pages, "Hey, has anybody lost a pet deer?" 
and people, the the, the largest reaction was the laughing reaction because, <laughs> oh honey, <laughs> well, oh my sweet pet? summer child, yeah, this is this is what happens when the snow falls on the mountains. The animals come out of the mountains and the hills and into town. And I guess just also last week, like on Friday, there was a cougar sighting, a mountain lion. Sighting. The one in Oregon? Uh, no, here in Iona. Really? Or here, okay. here in near town in Iona. <laughs> I heard about one in Oregon or Washington. I'm not sure which. Okay. Where it turned out to just be a really fat cat. <laughs> <laughs> ah. <laughs> which is so cute. <laughs> Can you imagine? You just, you're running away from Garfield. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's just a fat boy. <laughs> it's just a chonker. <laughs> it's a chunky boy. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> But yeah, okay, so Cougar in town? Yeah, well, I guess toward Highway 26 in Iona. That sounds right. Yeah, but that happens. Mm -hmm. That sometimes happens. That's what you get for living in the mountains, folks. Yeah. I mean, here's the thing. And that's why you're the worst person ever if you have indoor outdoor cats. I'm kidding, but kind of not, but kind of. I mean, maybe keep your cats But if you care about them. Well, and you know that they have a huge uh, impact on the environment, too. The cougars or the mountain lions or the, the fat cats. cats? Normal domesticated cats. They do? Normal chonkers. Yeah. They they have led to the extinction of so many species of birds. Because first off, they're an invasive species. They were never meant to exist here. Cats? Yes. Yes. But the Europeans brought them over because they were like, oh, little cuddly buddies. They're going to be on our ships and eat all of our rats and it'll be great. And <laughs> they brought them over here and made them pets and then let them outside. And they killed so many birds and lizards and rodents and just completely eviscerated entire species. I don't mean to sound like a warrior capitalist or anything, but if something gets, if, if something is made extinct by the common house cat, maybe it deserved to become uh, extinct. Those little those little babies are kind of ferocious. I, uh, I've got a scar from a common house cat. Realistically. Oh, yeah. I've got a few. Realistically. If a cat wanted to kill you and was like hell bent <laughs> determined to, it probably could. Well, they've made a movie about sloths going on killing sprees. Maybe they need to do one yeah. about kitties. <laughs> yeah. Point is, or house one, cat killer. What? Like <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'll just throw some titles out there. It'll be great. Yeah. Catacombs. Catacombs. Cat- yeah. <laughs> Catastrophe. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Cat slasher. Okay, wait. Cat- what if it's called Catacombs and it takes place in the catacombs, but it's a cat killing people in the catacombs? Yeah. There we it's go. It's pretty efficient. Yeah. You know, you kill them right there and then you, yeah. you can store their I bodies mean, really, right you there. You just got to kick them a foot to the side. Yeah. That's, what That's I probably didn't- what the cat does. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's what I didn't get about Slother House. Where'd the bodies go? Yeah. Like, it was always in common rooms and stuff. There was a lot of plausible no, deniability. No one found a body the entire time. The house was not that big. A lot of suspension of disbelief yeah. there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, go ahead. Sorry. The oldest, the oldest, uh, one of the oldest breeds of Egyptian cats is called the Egyptian Mau. Yes. M-A-U. And I just thought it was funny that the Egyptians, this highly advanced culture at one point, Called the thing by the sound it made. Yeah. What's that? Meow. <laughs> it's a meow. <laughs> One comment before we get to the meat of things. Uh, my friend Mo, the wise and powerful Mo, who I knew when I worked at WMYX in Milwaukee, where I learned to say radio station names that started with W. <laughs> because I've been a K guy all my life. Look it up. It's a, anyway. Um, Mo was a renaissance man. He could do anything and everything. I remember walking into his office once with a wild idea of mine going, hey, Mo, here's what I'd like to do. Can we make it happen? And he said, Mikey, we can make anything happen. It just requires time, energy, and money. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I thought, what a great, I mean, that that's almost an Elon Musk style tweet to, thing to say. He wouldn't say anything that good. Oh, yeah. Oh, he did. <laughs> Another a quote from Elon Musk that I really admire is, first, we have to determine if something is possible, and then probability will occur. Sure. That's a baller way of looking at something. Can I really quickly say? Yeah. So, Mo could do Mo than most? He could. <laughs> yes. Anyway... He likes to play around with AI. Here's a wild picture of me if I were somebody else. I don't know. Huh. And then 
he sent me a video. He he just he did a little finger quotes fan art for us. Oh yeah. Yeah, look at this. Okay, check this out. I love the neon, by the way. So that's kind of cool. That's fun, right? We we thought we'd play it on the show just to show you Mo. <laughs> right. Anyway, one thing we didn't miss though was Snow White Wednesday yes. night Thanksgiving Eve at the Civic Center for the Center for the by the Kiev Ballet or whoever they were. Right, which is so cool. And also, I love that someone saw a real like realistically. Here's how I think that the story of Snow White came to be. This guy was walking down the street and saw a chick who was just real pale. <laughs> and he was like, what's it like to be her? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what's it like to be her being rescued by a man? Right. Because they all, all the stories ended with being rescued by a, a prince. Right. Back yeah. in the day. Yeah. Uh, so, um, Which also, I'm just saying, he could have a field day with me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You'd be yeah. perfect. All we got to do is find some drugs and knock you out. There we go. Yeah. Anybody got a poison apple? <laughs> Or just a lot of turkey. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. After Thanksgiving, I took the most epic nap. <laughs> yeah. I was conked. Did you do it in a recliner in front of oh, a no. sports event on the TV with your hand about halfway <laughs> down your waistband? Oh, no. I fully committed. I did it in bed with just one pillow and my hand all the way down my pants. <laughs> for, for whatever reason. There, <laughs> that there was sounds a, bad. No, there was, a, <laughs> there was a comedian who talked about the sleep button. We yeah. got a sleep button right about here. You can't tell I'm doing it. But we got a sleep button right... Right about where your pants button is. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you put your hand there and just... <laughs> like C-3PO. May I shut down? Sure. <laughs> just power down. Yeah, I don't usually power down that quick, but I was out like a light. <laughs> But I wish I would have known in advance that they were from the Kiev Ballet. because mm -hmm. That's in Ukraine, right? It is. I wish I would have yelled at the end, Slava Ukraini. Yeah. But I didn't know. Well, especially because apparently didn't. they didn't, like, no one on their staff were in their, uh, <laughs> in their cast English. spoke English. Yeah, nobody. Like, <laughs> they they had, only spoke Ukrainian. They had a hard time communicating with the civic. It was apparently a bit of an issue. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Which I think... I. So I remember asking, like, oh, was that a problem? And just the exacerbated, just exhausted look. Yeah, it was a problem. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So they're they're obviously touring on a shoe st shoestring budget and don't really have a translator here in town. I mean, had we known in advance, we, the Civic, um, we probably could have find some found somebody who oh, yeah. went on a mission to Ukraine and could have translated for free yeah. tickets or whatever i don't know yeah no no i i mean my dad specifically said he's like well if i would have thought about it i would have gotten someone because i know like three people mm. Mm -hmm. which is hilarious <laughs> so it was the perfect format for a ballet for me uh -huh. for my adhd tv <laughs> it was 40 minutes 20 minute intermission 40 minutes mm -hmm. just perfect and every scene was beautiful it was the beautiful. background especially incredibly Sets, pretty costumes lighting yeah, on yeah. point oh and i you and I both loved the deer in it. I loved the deer. They were so cute. And the choreography the choreography for them was spot on. And they were in a lot of scenes. But yeah, there's right. the woodsman, there's Snow White, there's the prince. Those are the main characters. Uh -huh. Oh, and the evil queen. Of course. Her it was costuming amazing. was pow. Right. Uh, but then there were cute little woodland creatures. First there were bunnies, then there were the deer, and then there were the animals that are debate. up for debate. <laughs> <laughs> I think- Mice? That I think they're squirrels. I thought oh. initially they were mice because I just saw their little rounded ears. But they ears. have the traditional, almost identical to Mickey Mouse. Right. Head. But hair. they were a little smaller than Mickey Mouse. And oh. the other thing that made me think that they're squirrels is because they definitely emulated the Disney version of Snow White in costume. Okay. And her three main friends were bunnies, deer, and squirrels. Yeah, but I thought squirrels had pointer, pointier ears. I think you're thinking of flying squirrels. As someone who has met many a squirrel up close and personally. They're they're round? They're round. Like a mouse's? Yes. They're round and very small. Mice, many much mice? Many much mice. Okay. As a matter of fact, my aunt actually had not just one, two pet squirrels. Okay. So well, Subsequently. You're... Actually, maybe even three. Apparently, I'm not squirrely enough. I yeah. haven't 
downloaded enough squirrel memes. I'll work on that. <laughs> but no, she had one squirrel and named. Post one and get a viral. She, she had one squirrel, the squirrel that I grew up with named Peanut. Uh, whose favorite food was ice cream and her favorite drink was root beer. <laughs> and she was wow. a chunky little squirrel, <laughs> as you can imagine. Yeah. <laughs> they were treats, but she did get them occasionally. That's how I get chunky. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But yeah, no, she just had little tiny ears right on the side of her head. They were huh. just small. Okay. Yeah. And she destroyed every banister in that damn house. Yeah. <laughs> I don't. I pets that destroy things, yikes. It's a little much. Yeah. But she was investment. she was a fun little companion. She was really cool. All right. And she definitely made a home in my aunt's heart. Oh. So Okay. That's warm and cuddly. One last Thanksgiving thing to talk about. You'll be pleased to know that uh Dame Wanda Dench and Jamal Hinton got together for their eighth Thanksgiving this year. <gasps> You remember these guys? Yeah, that meme. Yeah, white yeah. grandma in Arizona, I think in Mesa, and he's in Tempe or maybe vice versa. But anyway, she texts who she thinks is her grandchild and says, hey, you know, we've Thanksgiving is this date at this time, this place. And he texts back, who is this? And she texts, I'm your grandma. And he said, you not my grandma. Can I still get a plate though? <laughs> Just the cutest thing. She said, of course, that's what grandmas do. We feed everybody. <laughs> and now for eight years, they're making a Netflix movie about it. I love that. Called The Thanksgiving Text. That's so cute. I guess they're business partners in life now, too. They've got some sort of high pH water. Whoa. That okay. they're working on, which I can't. I'll, I'll taste it. I would it. drink you know, that. I'm a sucker for. You love a nice high pH water. I love Essentia for high pH, mm -hmm. but yeah, they're still going strong. And even, even though um, you remember in 2020, um, Wanda's husband died of COVID. Oh, that's sad. It's so sad. But yeah, now they're sponsored by Airbnb and like, it's just crazy insane. And Well, and at least she had the support of her friends. Yeah, you know? right. And Jamal. She had something to look forward to. Yeah, that's nice. And you know, Allegiant has pretty sad. cheap tickets from Idaho Falls to Mesa I mean, maybe we can. Can you fit two more at the table? Yeah. <laughs> hey, Wanda and Jamal. Can, you, can I get a plate, though? All right. I wonder if she gets like a text to Dave at that. Can I get a plate, though? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she like has to start a soup kitchen. <laughs> Do people see her on the street and go, can I get a plate, though? <laughs> <laughs> That's cute. I mean, probably not. That's a level of fame. Yeah, right. Right. That's that true. That I wouldn't want, but yeah. There's probably... She's probably had it happen a time or two, but I bet you it started with a question. Aren't you that gal? Yeah. You know, something like that. Are you the Thanksgiving text grandma? Are you the Thanksgiving granny? Yeah. Yeah. What a, what a thing to be, you know, Andy Warhol said years ago, um, in the future, everyone will be famous for 15 minutes. Mm. And that was sort of a famous quote on pop culture mm -hmm. in that more and more people would become famous for a shorter and shorter period of time right and then the internet happened and then youtube happened and right. now tiktok he was way off in the future everybody will become famous for 15 seconds like me this week <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> like my stupid little dominoes <laughs> video this week yeah the biggest idaho news this week is about brian koberger looks like <sighs> that trial is going to be starting about the uh, murder of the moscow four mm -hmm. he's the suspect and his lawyers said, hey, we uh, don't want any media in the courtroom. And the judge granted that request. But then he's going to have court-only video taken, and it will be available. Here was the part of the story I found surprising on the judge's own YouTube channel. Okay. So the, the thing that I'm having cognitive dissonance, and again, we were talking about the Johnny Depp Amber Heard footage earlier, the right. trial footage earlier. Yeah. Uh -huh. But the thing I'm having cognitive dissonance about is the judge has has his own YouTube channel. I mean, that's fine for him to have his own YouTube channel. It's a little different when he's using his YouTube channel to broadcast one of the biggest trials in the nation. Right. Of, I would say of this whole decade. Right. It's the right alongside Lori Vallow. Idaho trial of the century. Which also, yes. how crazy After. is it that so many big trials are happening right here in Idaho? That's what yeah, well, that's what we sort yeah. of talked about at the Val you know, we the episode we that. talked about the Vallow sentencing was what's up with Idaho? Yeah. Why are we getting well, all also, this national attention? Well, there was that attention? other cult mom who thought that her son was the second coming of Jesus Christ who fled here to Idaho, dude. Yeah. 
Just saying. So. Uh, could we stop this trend? That'd be cool. Thanks. So the story gets one degree sillier to me, which is the judge's name is John Judge. <laughs> He's Judge John Judge. He's Judge Judge. Yeah. That's basically like Moon Moon. Well, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I, I don't, A, know how I feel about, look, judges are su- supposed to be, you know, the uh, the highest ruling order. Mm-hmm. And th- and impartial. And impartial. And so if you have a judge with his own YouTube channel who gets to make the call, where the footage of the nation's, uh, where the nation's eyes are all going to be turned. Mm-hmm. And he chooses his own YouTube channel. Like, his, what's he going to do during the trial for views? Okay, you know what? I actually that's think, the cynical part of me. I think that there are some ways that this can be okay and still impartial. Okay, I think first and foremost, it cannot be monetized clearly because that yes. would be a conflict of interest, obviously. And then on top of that, I think he has to have comments off. Okay. And I think that as a creator, you can even make it so that they can't like or dislike your video. Like you can turn everything off and make it just viewable. Yeah, I don't know. I'm not totally sure because I'm not that tech savvy. But if you can do that, then I think it can be impartial. If you can't, even if you just have likes and dislikes on, I worry that that could have some influence over the trial. Right. What if, you know, the jurors watch? They're not supposed to, but what if they do? What if the judge checks out his view count during right. the trial? You know, that just seems so. What if one of the lawyers just happens to conflict mention conflict of interest? I mean, what if what what if one of the lawyers is watching and they see that when the judge rules or when the judge, you know, does something in favor of one party versus the other, that there are suddenly more likes than there were yesterday? Right. You know, that's kind of what. What if I the judge wonder... is playing? You know, David Bowie said, "Never pander to the gallery." Right. You know, uh, never never do what your fan base says you should do. Right. You know, what if the judge hasn't learned that lesson? What if he, okay, do you remember the scene in Naked Gun where Leslie Nielsen's character has to become an umpire for a baseball game so he can frisk a couple of players? No, because I haven't seen it, but I'll take your word. You've never seen blank? (laughs) I know, I know. Fake shock. We gotta see blank. Then you say, great, I'll put it on my list. (laughs) Okay, (laughs) so he's an umpire and, and then he realizes... Once the uh, pitcher throws and the catcher catches and the batter doesn't swing, he's got to make a call. So he goes, uh, strike? And the crowd goes wild. Uh Uh-huh. And so by strike two, he's doing little dances, little football end zone dances, Mm -hmm. playing to the crowd. By strike three, he calls it before it even hits, the ball even hits the mitt. What if we've got a judge who grandstands like that i would hope not i'm gonna assume that we don't and whether or not we do really what this is is a powerful option for Coburger's attorneys to claim a mistrial yeah right that, yeah there just seems to be some the thing is no matter liability, how that's a really good point no matter how good and honorable the judge is which i'm sure he is that is why he's called your honor And no matter how good he is, it does open up a case for a mistrial. And that's something I don't want. Have you ever heard the story of the twins and one was named Worthless and one was named Awesome or something? I'm sure I'm getting my facts wrong. And the the one named Awesome did awesome in life and the one named Worthless didn't do so well in life. Do you wonder if there's any truth to... Like here's a here's a judge named Judge Judge. Right. Is there any like okay? What's you, in a name? You, what's in a name? You remember Judge a Dredd? Rose by any other name would smell so sweet. Yeah. Like like those <laughs> cheesy absolutely. '80s movies, you know. Um, Death Bl- Captain John Deathblow is Deathblow. <laughs> you know. Right. Like oh uh, oh because he was named. You know, they did that a lot for whatever reason in cheesy 80s movies is the guy's last name was, you know, right. Razor Sling or I don't, you know. Yeah, yeah. And so, um, yeah, I wonder if that's how he became a judge. I don't know. I mean, I will say with someone who has the last name Morgan, there's been a huge part of me for so long who's wanted to become a pilot <laughs> so that at one point. Wait, a pilot or a pirate? Both. Okay. <laughs> but. Uh, no matter what, they call you captain. Yeah. <laughs> so and then you do captain the little Morgan. stance. You bring your knee up <laughs> yeah. and, and hold, hold an invisible bottle. drink. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. <laughs> Second biggest story, the INL had a data breach. Which, here's the thing. I've wanted a job at the INL for so long. Yeah? Would that be your dream job? Mm, probably. You got to drive I mean, out 90 miles into the West Desert into Arco every well, day. First and of all, back. what I'd actually want is to work at the one in town. Okay. Actually, what I'd want is to work from home for the INL because <laughs> they pay good. And um, I mean, realistically, I don't dream of work. But if I had to work, but if you have to work, INL sounds pretty baller. Says the hardest working woman I know. <laughs> I mean, geez, I do so much, and that's why I dream of not having to someday. I just, I just want a good retirement plan. If the atomic power plant can't protect its data, what else are the hackers getting into? Well, that's what I was gonna say. I wanted a job there for so long, and now all of a sudden, I'm real grateful I haven't yet. <laughs> <laughs> we got a meltdown. Yet. Is that what's next? <laughs> Yeah. Come on, guys. The breach occurred in a vendor system prompting immediate action and federal law enforcement involvement. I'm sure they're on it. Are th are they the home? Oh, I mean, I'm sure they are. <laughs> Was their password password? <laughs> <laughs> I just that uh, check check those rods in the Come core on. of the thing with the Give them a little credit. Obviously their password was potato. <laughs> Because we live in Idaho. Potato one, two, three. <laughs> yeah. Also, I'm never going to get a job there after this segment. So this better blow up better or else I will never have Kiss that goodbye. <laughs> I will never financially recover from this. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Joe Exotic. So INL employees that are listening to this, hopefully during one of your three hours of commute time on a daily basis, mm -hmm. maybe change your passwords. Yeah. You know, one thing that's good is everyone who works at the INL has been vetted pretty thoroughly. Mm -hmm. So at least they don't have too many skeletons in the closet to uncover. Like, realistically, there's not that much ransom that they can hold on anyone because no one's really done anything that bad. Yeah. You know? I guess. I just, the fact that it happened the is fact what that it scares happened and is, upsets me. The fact that it happened is scary. And realistically, they probably didn't get to much. Yeah. Yeah, they just yeah, came up with a bunch of clean stuff on a bunch of clean people. I mean, realistically, probably what they found was like they got into a Google Docs of like a contacts list of some of the people who worked there and who their secret Santa is, <laughs> you know? Right. And they're going to be like, we'll reveal to you who gave you your gift this year if you don't give us a billion dollars. <laughs> One billion dollars. <laughs> yeah, it's like a Google Doc, you know? <laughs> Here's who's been talking shit about other people in the office and exactly what they've said. Here we go. <laughs> oh my gosh. Have you smelled Karen's stinky snacks lately? How does she eat those? Who microwaves salmon at work? <laughs> Her poor husband. <laughs> yeah, like that's the worst they're going to get. It's who's not been like drinking have... my holiday flavored coffee creamer? <laughs> it's not like they're going to have like the codes to the nuclear bombs or anything like that from it but are you sure i you are know you sure? i am i have a lot of faith in the inl i think that they keep those pretty well encrypted they probably got some stuff and that's why it's newsworthy but realistically probably not much i know we've been able to accomplish a lot as a country but one person i think like during one of the first few um rocket flights to the moon said just remember you're trusting your life um, you know, I don't know how many hundreds of thousands of miles away from planet Earth to a machine that was built by the lowest bidder. <laughs> Oof. <laughs> you know? That's a good that's point. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's why they pay so well at the INL. <laughs> We're trust look, if the Yellowstone Caldera doesn't get us, <laughs> then an INL meltdown will. And we're trusting it to a bunch of people whose passwords are password one, two, three. No, potato one, two, three. <laughs> yeah, right. Give them a little credit. <laughs> well, that's our show. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. We'd want to leave you with some video of just lights around town. Here's the water tower, the Japanese friendship garden, and the mm -hmm. bridge and memorial. Doesn't that look all nice? So magical. We need to make a little correction, too. Remember when we said that the free skating ice skating rink was in between Ribbon Chop House and Smoke Smoking and Fins, Fins there in the Broadway Plaza? Nope, they moved it this year. Surprise. Mm -hmm. It's across the street on Mo and down a little bit on Memorial. There's the giant Santa mailbox Cute. and the little place where you rent skates. And then this random super cool bus at the Family Fun Center. Oh, yeah. That looked fun. This looks like a bus that would drive a bunch of drunk people around on New Year's, doesn't it? I'm kind of wondering <laughs> what exactly they mean by buzz bus. Yeah. 
You know? And then I visited 1385 Lowell Drive in Idaho Falls, tuned oh. my radio to 90.9 FM for the Owens Family Lights. Oh. Owenslights.com, I guess, so they've been doing this for 17 years. Mm. And I guess due to health problems, they need to make this their last year. But oh. they did lights for Halloween and Thanksgiving and Christmas. And so a lot of people asking, hey, where are them lights at? Well, 1385 Lowell Drive is where you'll find him. And right. this is the last year after 17 years that they're going to be doing it. So kind of sad, but also very cool light display that they do. Owenslights.com, Owens Family Lights. You are IFAF this week. Chris Pie 5, 21 Finger Gun Salute. Pew, pew. Chef's Kiss to you. Well done. It's been fun. One more reminder to go check out our bonus mini-sode that we came out with. 13 different places to shop local. I'm very proud of it. This holiday season. You did a great job compiling that. Well, bitches be shopping. (laughs) (laughs) Me, I'm bitches.